Yeah. Episode one, we've got the true crime queen. I hope you don't mind me calling you that. Back in the hot seat. Hitting us every day for the next seven days. Same. With a true crime story. What have you got for us today? Okay, you're going to laugh at the name, but it is still a murder case. Today we're going to be talking about the Scissor Sisters. Oh! oh. My, um, my mind goes elsewhere. Yeah, I, don't, <laughs> I was just thinking of the band. Yeah, I wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go on. They're called the Mulhall family, and yeah. they're from Cork in Ireland. And so the family was really, really big. It was obviously a mum and a dad and six children, but today we're going to be focusing more on the mum and two daughters in particular, because there were this family were not very functional. They did a lot of drugs. They were all alcoholics. None of them worked, and... A lot of the kids grew up and decided to like break away from that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but the mum and these two daughters continued in a life of drugs and everything. It's like years and years ago, or was this like fairly recently? Um, relatively recently. Yeah. Two thousand and tens, I want to say. Oh wow! Oh, wow! Yeah. Very close to home. Right. I've not heard of this, so I'm I'm intrigued. So the mother was called Kathleen, and the daughters were called Charlotte and Linda. Linda for a daughter in 2010. Yeah. No wonder she was fucked up. <laughs> well, she was probably born in like the 1980s. 70s. Oh, is she? Oh, oh, so right. well, they're adult daughters. Oh, okay. Right. Okay. right. For some reason, I just thought 13, <laughs> which is weird when I thought Scissor Sisters. Right. Oh. <laughs> I was going to ask how much we're allowed to joke in these because uh, when she started mentioning the alcoholic family, I really wanted to reference you. <laughs> God, Stevie, oh, that, that hurt. <laughs> that hurt. It's a painful memory. <laughs> okay. So yeah, one day the mother, Kathleen, gets a boyfriend named Farah Nua. And Farah has a past. He was a serial rapist. He had several children to his victims. He abused every girlfriend he ever had. But for some reason, Kathleen kept him around. And the daughters obviously didn't like him. And he was very abusive to Kathleen, but she stuck with him. Right. And he joined in with all this drugs, alcohol, everything like that. Um, and then one day it was the daughter Charlotte's birthday and so they all went out drinking together they went to pubs and everything but they weren't the wealthiest of families and so they ran out of money pretty much in this pub straight away so they went to a shop they bought a full big bottle of vodka like a litre bottle of vodka and just went and drank on a pier somewhere right and one of the daughters brought along ecstasy pills and so they all the family all had them but they wouldn't let Farah have one because he was abusive and violent as it was. But, but, the, but that's going to chill him out, isn't it? <laughs> He'll just ecstasy. be. I don't think ecstasy is well known for chilling people out. No, but it doesn't make people go. It doesn't make me, you want to murder. It makes if you just you're, if you're maybe a serial you, if you're a serial rapist, nah, it's yeah. just on the dance floor. But then if you add in a little bit of serial rapist spice, you know, you know, you don't know where it's going to take you. Really. I guess if you're already a rapist, yeah, the ecstasy is probably just going to make you want to rape more. Yeah, yeah. Hell. <laughs> right, I think we need to establish a tone here yeah. because when Ellen's, Helen is being like a serial rapist and then yeah you don't tend to get this kind of reaction to your videos do it's you it's fine it's fine Sorry. your viewers Sorry. will be used to that though yeah. Yeah. But you know put, I'm a scumbag yeah but, <laughs> yeah but you've now put your name to it <laughs> right. <laughs> right okay so yeah all the women had these pills but they wouldn't let Farah had one, have one um, and Farah, anyway, he was drinking and so he was still very abusive. He was shouting and they began walking back to his apartment. But on the way there, he spotted a child because one. OK, so one of the girls that he raped was a Chinese girl. And this boy was a Chinese boy around that kind of age that his son would have been. And so him in this like drunken state thought that was his son. And so he started screaming in the middle of the street, saying, that's my baby, that's my son. And he was scaring the child, scaring the parents, scaring everyone around. And so this whole family, the whole Mulhall family, were screaming at each other, trying to drag everyone back to the apartment. It was a whole scene. Mm. They eventually get back to the apartment and they carry on drinking. One of the girls crushes up an ecstasy tablet and puts it in Farah's drink anyway, which seems counterproductive. Yeah, she's smart. And then they were all sat in the living room and Farah comes on to one of the daughters, Linda. And Linda is very uncomfortable. That's her mum's boyfriend. Even though Farah was quite young, but she was still really uncomfortable. And so she told him to stop and he stopped. But then he started again a couple of minutes later and she told him to stop again. But then he just kind of like got more aggressive with it. And so her sister came in. She was like, she told you to stop, like stop. And 
that kind of snapped something in his brain and suddenly he grabs Linda off the sofa, the one that he was trying to come on to, and he starts dragging her to the bedroom and everyone knows exactly what he was going to do to her. Mm. And so the sister goes up and she's like trying to pull her away from him and everything and it's not working. And so the mum comes over because that's her boyfriend. She feels like she can like level with him and he stops with the sister and then grabs the mum, Kathleen, and the mum's like smaller than everyone else. So he starts dragging her to the bedroom and he's quicker this time because she's smaller. She's not putting up as much of a fight. And so she knows how intoxicated he is and he's never been in such a rage before. And she's saying to her daughters, like, kill him for me, kill him for me. Wow. And so he drags her into the bedroom and Linda goes to the kitchen and she grabs a Stanley knife. She comes back over to them. She grabs Farah's head, pulls it back and slits his throat. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Fuck. But that doesn't stop him. He's still trying to oh. take the mum to the bed. And so the other daughter, Charlotte, runs to the kitchen, grabs a butcher's knife, comes back, starts stabbing him. He ain't stopping. Jesus so they run Christ. back again, get a hammer. One of them starts hitting him over the head with a hammer. He ain't stopping. Uh, what the, the hell? Salts or what? Like, Jesus Christ. Christ. And so Linda pulls his head back again, <clears throat> slits his throat a second time. And he falls to the floor. He probably fell to the floor before that. Um, and he's on the floor, but he's still trying to grab for these women and everything. I don't know what he thought he was going to do at that point. Mm, but they all kind know. of gather around the floor around him. There's three weapons, the hammer, the Stanley knife, and the butcher's knife. It's like him oh. a Cluedo. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. And they all just stab him and don't stop for a good five minutes at least. They didn't stop until he was cold on the floor. And there must have been in the region of 200 wounds on this man. Fucking they hell. They counted so many stabs and then the hits with the hammer, they couldn't even calculate that in an right. autopsy because he was so messed up. Like, anyway. Fuck. So after this, the women all go and sit in the living room and suddenly they just kind of relax and snap out of the state that they were just in and they all just start sobbing. Yeah. And screaming and crying, realizing that they've just killed a man. Yeah. And what are they going to do? And they're starting to be like, well, we need to hide the body. What are we going to do? Police are going to find us. And so Charlotte was the more kind of level headed sister. The mother and Linda were still in hysterics on the floor. And so Charlotte goes and grabs Farah's body, takes him to the bathroom. And then when the other two women have calmed down, they all come in and they start dismembering this man's body. Oh, my word. And. They cut his legs into three separate bits. They cut his arms into two separate bits. They're cutting pieces off his torso. And every single time they cut something off this man, they throw it into the bath. Like not even just place it in a bag or anything, throw it into the bath. There was blood all over this bathroom. And the last thing that they did to him before they beheaded him, the last thing they did was Linda grabbed this man's penis and said, you'll never rape my mom again and cut his penis off. What the wow. hell? I mean, it's psychotic, but it's empowering in the same way. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, there's a message there, I yeah. guess. I think. Good fucking God. Did they go to prison for that? Wait for that bit. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I thought you were finished. Sorry. Sorry, my bad. Jumping the gun and all that. So they put all these body pieces into bin liners and they put all the bin liners into Farah's own gym bag. So his body is in his own bags and they take it all to a river and, like, weight them down, put them in this river, and they think they're never going to think about this ever again and they take the head to a park and their idea was to bury it so they dug a hole under a park bench buried it but really obviously so there was like a really big mound under this park what bench and so they went home and for a few days no one well they were all still in hysterics like taking more drugs drinking more than they normally would to try and forget this and one of the girls keeps having nightmares about this head like talking to her and so she goes back digs it up, takes it elsewhere and reburies it. Um, and then eventually, the way that this was all solved was one of his legs floated to the top of the river. Now, Farah was an African man. He was black. However, this leg was white because the sun and the water had taken all the pigment out of this leg. So police were putting like on the news and everything, oh. white male leg found in a river... So it took forever to identify this body because they thought they were looking for a white male that was missing. Wow. Oh my God. And eventually 
the mother, Kathleen, goes to visit one of her other sons in prison, tells them everything because it's been on their minds forever. And this son felt like the daughters were really disrespecting the mum. Like they were letting the mum take the blame kind of yeah. when it came to other things as well. Um, and so this son was like, you're not doing that to my mum. And he went and told police on his own sisters. Really? And that's how wow. the case was solved. Oh, oh my God. How so, have we not heard of this? That's mad. I, I, there's, I have one gripe. Mm. Scissors sisters. No scissors used. Exactly. Oh. Yeah. A lot of people have a problem with that one. Yeah. Uh, who the, came the, up with a name? The, they could be the, the Stanley sisters. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the, Don't mind that. Yeah. I think like if you great gonna, story though. Oh my god. If if you are gonna be, if you're gonna kill your rapist, that's I kind of feel like yeah, that's, that's yeah. justified. Yeah. But then cutting them up and just throwing them in a bath, that's kind of like you must have a screw loose to be able to do that. I feel like. Mm. I do, do you not agree? Like, I feel like once yeah. I've killed someone, I'm like, all right, that's done now. Yeah, like, especially once you've had the adrenaline dump as well, because you're probably in a fit of rage when you're stabbing someone to death. But yeah, once you've had that dump, and that's why I find to this then go so and dismember is yeah. Because that's one of the only cases I've ever heard of where they're like a mess afterwards. Yeah, and, like they yeah. can't even breathe because they're crying so much and stuff. Mad. I don't hear that often. Farah, that's a cool name as well. <laughs> I, think, I was thinking that yeah. as soon as really you said is. it, it's like Farah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, probably best not name. You cool kids name, not cool lifestyle choice. That what is that? What lifestyle it is? Choice. I wouldn't say it's not an occupation. Being a serial rapist is a lifestyle choice. I would say it is. Going to the gym, Jack, is a lifestyle <laughs> choice. <laughs> um, there we go. Yeah, the story of the Scissor Sisters. <laughs> <laughs>